this lesson we're going to talk about heat transfer, which is the next kind of section in the heat chapter. Um, I'd like you to open pages 109 and 110 of your textbook and kind of use them along with this video to make your notes. So you don't need to do anything today except make notes. You don't need to do any questions at the end of it. So take your time and make a good set of notes in your copy. So what is heat transfer all about? Well, heat transfer is basically all about how heat moves. So how does heat go or travel from one place to another? And um, the first thing you need to know about how heat moves is the direction that heat will always travel. And heat will always travel from something that's hot to something that's cold or something that has more heat energy to something that has less heat energy. So for example, if you have a cup and that cup has tea in it, which is at 100 degrees Celsius, and you put it on a coaster on the table, which has a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, the, heat, the cup of water will lose heat energy and the coaster will gain heat energy. So what will happen is the coaster will heat up and the cup will cool, cool down. But also, heat will be given to the air around it because as the cup of tea cools down, it gives heat to the cooler areas around it. So heat always moves, heat always moves from hot to cold. From hot to cold. And one of the things you might have heard before is if uh, your body has a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius or whatever, but if you touch a, a railing outside, a cold railing, this is supposed to be your hand touching the railing, what happens is it feels cold. And the reason it actually feels cold is because your body is losing heat energy. Heat is leaving your body and traveling to, into that railing. So you're losing heat energy and that's where you get that cold kind of feeling from. And obviously you get a bigger cold feeling when you have when you touch a conductor rather than an insulator. So there's three methods of heat transfer that you need to know about. And you have talked about them in junior cert. Method one is why isn't this zooming down? Something's going on here. So, sorry, there's something wrong with the um, screen. So method one is known as conduction. Method two is known as convection. And method three is known as radiation. So these are the three different ways that heat can travel. Now, it's not a case of heat picking which one, one it uses. It's a case of what heat is traveling from and what heat is traveling into. So conduction is how heat travels in solids. And you imagine you have a solid bar and you know that the particles in that bar are arranged in nice neat rows where all the particles are very, very close together. Well, we've mentioned already that unless that bar is at absolute zero, if it's at room temperature or even zero degrees Celsius, all of these particles are vibrating. They're moving up and down, they're, they're moving back and forth in vibration. Now let's say we heat up one end, we put a Bunsen burner to one end of the bar. What's it gonna do to these particles here? It's gonna make them vibrate faster or more rapidly. Now you can imagine what happens when these particles vibrate more rapidly. Because they're so close to the particle beside it, they're gonna hit off the particle beside them. And when they hit off it, they're gonna pass along some of their energy and cause this particle to start to vibrate. This particle will then hit off the particle beside it and cause it to vibrate, and so on and so on. So what happens is the kinetic energy of the particles, the kinetic energy of the particles moves from the hotter area, higher heat energy, to the lower area. So heat moves from left to right in that direction. And that's known as conduction. Now, obviously, that can only happen in solids because in solids, the particles are only arranged uh, this tightly together. You imagine the same thing happened in a gas. Well, here's gas particles all spread out. And I heat up this one and I cause it to vibrate more. And actually, as well, it would move around the room quicker. 
is it going to pass on its energy to the other particles as easily or in the same way? Well, no, it won't because the particles aren't arranged in this kind of way. So that's why conduction only happens in solids. Now, the actual definition that you need to know is on page 109 of your textbook, so you can take down the proper definition. And there's also a demonstration that you've done in junior cert, or you should have done in junior cert, as to how you can show conduction. So the second method of heat transfer is convection. And this is how heat travels in liquids and gases. Now, what do we know about the particles in liquids and gases compared to the particles in solids? Well, the particles are free to move. Free to move. So obviously it's going to happen, or heat is going to move a little bit differently in uh, liquids and gases. So what happens here is, um, let's say we have particles and they're in a container, gas particles. Now if we heat up that whole container, before we heat it up, what are those particles doing? Well, they're whizzing around. They're all whizzing around the container, hitting the walls and exerting a pressure on the walls. Now, if we heat it up, what do we do? We give them more energy, so they start hitting the walls much, much faster. Now, you imagine that these, this wall was kind of malleable, it could move. Well, if you wanted to keep the same pressure, the wall would have to get bigger because the particles are exerting a, more of a for, force on it. Now, this is just a made-up scenario, but you imagine it's like a balloon or something like that. If you heat up the particles in a balloon, the balloon will get bigger because they have more energy. So what happens is the particles tend to spread out when they're given heat energy. And what we say is they become less dense because they're spread out over a larger space or they're trying to spread out over a larger space if they're allowed to do so. Now, you might remember from junior sort as well, what happens when you have two substances together and one of them is less dense than the other? Well, the less dense one will always rise to the top. And that's effectively what happens in convection. Sorry, having video issues here again. So what happens is, let's say you have a room. and you have a radiator here. The air particles that are near that radiator, they get heated up. And when they get heated up, they start to spread out and become less dense. And because they're less dense, what they'll do is they'll start to rise to the top, just in the same way that if you have water and oil, the oil will sit on top of the water because it's less dense. Less dense substances will kind of rise to the top of more dense substances. This is known as a convection current. And you've heard the term hot air rises and it's how hot air balloons work. We heat up the air particles. They all start, they all have more energy. They spread out, they become less dense and the hot air rises to the top. Now, if the less dense hot air is rising to the top, obviously the more dense cool air that is at the top of the room starts to sink. More dense, cooler air starts to sink. And what you get is you get this current moving around the room where air is constantly rising to the top, being heated and rising to the top, and the cooler air is falling and sinking to the bottom. And you get this convection current going around the room, and over time, hopefully, it heat, the radiator will heat up your own, whole room. And that's why radiators are at the bottom of the room. They have to be at the bottom because they'll heat the air and cause it to rise. Whereas if you were ever in a hot country, you'll notice that the air conditioning units are usually higher in the room. And that's because they pump in cool air into the room, so the cool air will fall. Whereas if you put them at the bottom of the room, that cool air is falling, but it's not gonna spread around the room. The last type of um, heat transfer method
So you're just having problems with the, the video here at the moment. The last method of heat transfer is radiation. And actually we've come across radiation before. We called it infrared radiation. So infrared radiation. And radiation basically is where any object that's hot, for example, you have a hot cup of tea, gives off these invisible infrared electromagnetic waves which spread out into the room and are always going from hot substances to cold substances. <clears throat> so radiation is when heat travels by electromagnetic, I'm just going to put EM, you can get the definition from your book, waves which are invisible, electromagnetic waves. Now the thing about radiation is radiation does not need, does not need any particles. And this is how heat gets from the sun to us, because heat from the sun has to travel from the sun through the solar system where there's no particles to get to Earth. So obviously heat needs that way to kind of transfer as well. So a couple of things you have to know about radiation. One of them is that dark substances, say like you had a black um, tin can or a silver tin can, they absorb and emit radiation at different rates. So dark substances are really good emitters of radiation. So if you had something like, if you had 100 degrees Celsius, water at 100 degrees Celsius and you put it in a dark can, it would cool down much quicker than if you put in water of 100 degrees Celsius into a light colored can or a shiny can. And that's because dark substances are much better emitters of radiation. They give off heat quicker. Conversely then, if you had a dark can that was cool, let's say it was five degrees Celsius, five degrees Celsius. Remember, this is gonna absorb heat from the surroundings. It would actually absorb heat quicker from the surroundings as well. It would get warmer quicker than a shiny can. A shiny can is not as good as absorbing heat, and in fact, it can reflect heat away. So that's why on a hot day, you're better off sitting in a silver car than you are in a black car, because the silver car will stay a little bit cooler for longer the black car will really heat up really quickly. And it's the same with even the clothes you're wearing. If you're wearing a white t-shirt rather than a black t-shirt, you'd actually stay cooler for longer. So there are the three methods of heat transfer. Um, all of them can be happening at the same time. So for example, this cup of tea here, we might have a cup of tea and it's giving off infrared radiation into the room. It's transferring heat from it to the coaster by conduction because we've solids, so it's moving through solids. And then it's also heating the air up above it, causing a convection current. So all three happen at the same time, and we have different ways to kind of on each one of them, but we'll talk about that in the next lesson.